Eight firefighters were injured Thursday in a severe highway crash involving a fire truck in Southern California, authorities said. Chief Brian Fennessy of the Orange County Fire Authority said the truck overturned on the California State Route 241 just north of Portola Hills. The vehicle was transporting a ground crew after a 12-hour shift fighting a massive wildfire in Orange County called the Airport Fire. A ladder in the road caused the truck to swerve, strike a guard rail and overturn, Fennessy said. At least one firefighter was flown by helicopter with others transported by ambulance to hospitals. All of our crews that were involved are going through a formal critical incident stress debriefing at our headquarters right now, Fennessy said. You can only imagine how traumatic it is for their brother and sister firefighter to see them injured like that on the freeway. We've suffered a, a, uh, a major accident that has injured many of our firefighters. We experienced a rollover accident at 6.50 p.m. this evening on northbound 241, just north of Portola. One of our hand crews, Crew 1, the Santiago crew, was finishing up their 12-hour shift on the airport fire. They were involved in a solo vehicle rollover accident. We had eight OCFA hand crew members injured, eight patients in total. Seven were transported by ground ambulance, one trans transported by OCFA Copter 3. Six were taken to local trauma centers, three to Mission Hospital, two here to OC Global, and one to UCI. Two of those patients were taken in stable condition to Hogue, Irvine. They do have full seat belts. They're very safe vehicles. Again, the accident is being investigated now. My understanding is that the CHP is on scene investigating, so we don't have any information as to what occurred to cause the rollover. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced Thursday an energy fund of 160 million euros to help Ukraine through the winter, funded mostly by frozen Russian assets held in the bloc. The European Union estimates that about half of Ukraine's energy infrastructure has been destroyed since Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022. Von der Leyen told reporters that 100 million euros of the funds are from immobilized Russian assets and will go towards repairing damage to energy infrastructure and developing renewable energy production. The EU aims to decentralize Ukraine's energy production, through the use of solar panels and other new technologies, to reduce the impact of Russian attacks on its energy grid, she said. It is only right that Russia pays for the destruction it caused, Von der Leyen said. At the same news conference, Fadi Bayral, head of the International Energy Agency, warned of the domestic challenges ahead as Ukraine prepares to face its third winter at war. We may see huge implications and this may lead to some consequences beyond the energy sector, because people will look to move around, to go to the places where they could have shelter and heating. And this will also go beyond the social and the energy issues to some political consequences, he said. Overall. The EU estimates that it has provided Ukraine with at least 2 billion euros in energy support since the February 2022 invasion. Von der Leyen said she will meet with President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev to discuss energy issues on Friday. Thank you very much. We will now move to a few questions before we do so. Two points we are taking questions on. As Ukraine's friends and partners, we must do all we can to keep the lights on. And as winter is approaching, we must keep the brave people of Ukraine warm, while we also are keeping the economy running. The objective is to address the immediate needs of the population while we make Ukraine's energy system more resilient in the long term. Now, overall, Ukraine needs 17 gigawatt of power capacity for this winter. Today I want to propose action in three areas. 
its repair, its connect, and it is stabilized. Thanks for the floor, Marie. Eighty percent of Ukraine's thermal plants have been destroyed and a third of the hydropower capacity. So this is where we will concentrate our repair efforts with the aim to restoring 2.5 gigawatt of capacity this winter. That is approximately 15 percent of Ukraine's needs. And we will co continue coordinating all possible support from our member states through the civil protection mechanism. So far, we have managed to send more than 10,000 power generators and transformers, and more help is coming. Thank you very much, David. And today I can announce that we will make an additional um, uh, amount of close to 160 million euros available for this winter. This includes 60 million euros in humanitarian aid for shelters and heaters, for example. And it includes around 100 million euros for repair works and renewables. And these 100 million euros come from the proceeds of the immobilized Russian assets in the European Union. Because it is only right that Russia pays for the destruction it caused. Because of the previous attacks on the uh, Ukrainian energy infrastructure, two thirds, two thirds of the power generation capacity of Ukraine was lost. And we are coming to winter, as you know, when the temperatures drop, energy demand increases, and this could be a major issue for electricity and for uh, heating in Ukraine. For not only for the, uh, the, uh, the homes, but for the hospitals, for schools, for the communication networks, we may see huge implications, and this may lead to some consequences beyond the energy sector, because people uh, will look uh, to move around, uh, to, uh, to go to the places where they can have shelter and heating, and this may also go beyond the social and, uh, and the energy issues to some uh, political consequences. So therefore, this is extremely important. It okay, thank you very much. This brings us to the end of our press conference. We will move on now to the technical review.